Oh, I think I have something good for you tonight. Amen. Amen. I know I say that every week, but I get so excited. Sometimes I'll be studying the Word. I said this Sunday, I'll study in the Word. I get lost. I don't mean to get lost. I just get to study in the Word. I'm having conversation with God. Now, I'm going to encourage you. Because sometimes I have conversation with God. It almost seems like I'm sitting here having conversation with you. And some people say, well, I've never experienced that kind of conversation. You will. Stay steady. It's coming. Amen. 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 Some people would like to, to know that. Tonight we're going to discuss, and this I thought was funny because the Lord said it like this. What are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? In Philippians 4 and verse 8, Philippians 4 and verse 8, Amen. Philippians 4 and verse 8. You got that one? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Yes, and the King James says, think on these things. Here's my question, just as the Lord said it. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? Now, I wrote these things down specifically as he said it, because right here it says the very same thing. It says, whatsoever things are true. Now, here's the question. Think about this. We let things go through our mind all the time. Sometimes we meditate on them. Mm -hmm. We ponder on them. Anybody ever meditate on something so long you could actually see it happening and usually it was in technicolor come on and 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 sometimes i've had dreams where they're in surround sound and sometimes sometimes i can see things happening in technicolor in my life but if we're thinking on god's thoughts he said think on what is true the devil wants us to think on stuff that's not true he would like us to think on his lies he would like us to think on his deception. So we have a we have a choice here. Think on something true or think on something that's a lie. What are the promises of God? They're true. The Bible true. says they're yes and amen. They're true. But what do we meditate on? Sometimes it's not the promise. Mm -hmm. We meditate on the lie. Right. We meditate on the deception. Mm -hmm. Some people get a sickness in their body and they meditate on it. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, I don't know about that. Had this one guy, he tapped that little nodule on his chest so many times. He said, oh, I don't know about that. Oh, I don't know about that. He kept chest, he'd get in the shower, tap on that little nodule on his chest. Oh, I don't know about that. Oh, I don't know about that. Finally, he had to go to the doctor. He said, that thing is just swollen up into a quarter size mess on my shoe. And the doctor said, don't touch it. <laughs> yes. Think about things that are true. Then it says, think about things that are honest. What does the devil want us to think about? Come on. Dishonest. Yeah. It's always the opposite. How do we think on dishonest things? If the Bible says the word is true, and it is, the word is honest, and it is, we're supposed to meditate on these things. If you meditate on something else, it's not true and it's not honest. It's not honest. I had a guy tell me one day, he said, gas is going to $5 a gallon. I don't even know how I'm ever going to drive my truck again. It's $5 a gallon. That's just outrageous. Outrageous. $5 a gallon. And our president is trying to make it $5 a gallon. It's just awful. It's just awful. And I, I, I tried to stop him for several times. I said, wait a minute. That's not honest. He said, what do you mean? I said, gas prices have always gone up and down as far as I've ever been involved in buying gas. When I bought gas when I first started driving, it's 25 cents a gallon. I said, yes, it's gone up considerable, but house prices have too. So have wages. I'd work all day when I was a teenager for three bucks an hour. Or three bucks, excuse me, three bucks a day. <laughs> three bucks a day. And, and listen, if gas prices go to $5, you're going to still drive because you're going to be able to make five times the money you make now. And he said, I can't believe that. I said, you're not thinking on things honestly. You're thinking on things that are only selfish. It's not honest. Because if you're being dishonest, 
you're being manipulated by the thoughts that are not honest. Then it says, think on things pure. What is something that's not pure? Let me tell you what's not pure. Where you think you're a victim or where you think only of yourself. That's not pure thoughts. Those are not pure thoughts. Think of things that are just. Don't make excuses for yourself. Don't make things justified why you do certain things, but be just. The Bible says justify. Just, he said he wants you to live with justification. Don't justify yourself to whatever you want to do. Think about things that are lovely, not hateful. Think of things that are good report, not bad report. He said think of things that are virtue. Don't get caught up on dishonest, cowardly things and pitiful, prideful things or disrespectful things. Listen, I am, I'm, I'm all about respect. I think we ought to spend the time to make sure we respect. The Bible says respect your parents, respect those who are, who are in authority. I've heard of little, I mean, young people get pulled over by the police and they look up at them and say, what do you think you're doing? I'm tell you what they're doing. They're going to handcuff you and take you to jail because <laughs> they won't be disrespected like that. I think teachers ought to have that right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they just did. They've taken a lot of that away. And I think they ought to have that right. Listen, when I went to school, you didn't disrespect the teacher. I mean, the teacher said, take all your gum out of your mouth. You didn't say, I just put a fresh piece. You didn't do nothing. You just, you just took it out of your mouth. I can remember one time when I was in high school, I had gum in my mouth. Now, the teacher had already told the class the day before, don't have gum in. And I just forgot to put it in the trash can. And the teacher came by and said, what's that in your mouth? And I went, nothing. <laughs> and they said, get out another fresh piece. And I'm chewing the fresh piece. And he says, now give it to me. And he put it on my ear. And he said, no, let's put it on your nose. Wear it for the class. Now, today we call that abuse. We try to get the teacher kicked out for stuff like that. But then the teacher said, if I ever catch you with gum again, we're going in the hallway and you're going to meet my SWAT. I didn't even know what his SWAT was, but I didn't want to meet it. Are you with me? <laughs> the Bible says, think about things that are virtuous and praiseworthy. That's something that's worthy of being thankful for. In other words, the devil would want us to think about things that we should be unthankful for. So we meditate on stuff we're not happy with instead of meditating on stuff we're supposed to be happy with. Now, it's not about just guilt and condemnation for thinking the wrong thought, but the Lord wants us to take it and put the light on it so that we start thinking about things that he told us to think about. How many of us, now don't raise your hand, have let anything but just virtue and praise and good roll through your mind. We've let all kinds of stuff in there. We let it all, all the junk. It goes through all the time. And he said, don't do that. The Holy Spirit is there to point out what is wrong and convict you to do what is right. In 2 Corinthians 10, you get to verse 5, 2 Corinthians 10, and verse 5, I need someone to read that, please. Thank you. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Casting down imaginations. You know, the biggest problem with thinking wrong thoughts is we let them continue. And we ponder on them. And we think about them. Anybody ever had a problem that you just said, I just need to think about this? I just need to think about this. But we weren't thinking on the good about this. We're thinking on what's wrong, what's bad, how am I going to fix it, what we're going to do, how am I going to get out of this? We're not thinking about God's getting us through. And we need to walk in a different kind of thought than we have before. Don't just cast out the thought. That's what the Bible says, cast out imaginations. But you need to replace that thought. Because if you don't replace it, it's going to creep back in. Listen, when I first started casting out or casting down imaginations, 
I'd try that. A thought would come, and I'd say, oh, that's a bad one. I'd just cast it out in the name of Jesus. The next thing I know, it's back in there. It's like, well, I just cast it out in the name of Jesus. It's back in there. I said, Lord, I said, how come that keeps coming back? He says, because it's trying to fill the void. You didn't actually <laughs> fill that thing up with something else. The Bible says if you cast out a devil, it comes back seven times worse. I pondered on it until I went in Fintium. And finally I said, Lord, what are you going to do? He says, get a scripture and meditate on that. Oh, that's how you cast it down. He said, it's not just saying I cast it down, but you take the word and actually cast it down. So when I took the word to it, it changed my thoughts to virtue and praise and praiseworthy and honest and true. Because that's what the word is. Jesus said, my word is truth. Amen. you got to praise him for what you're expecting to happen, not just ponder on what's going wrong. If you keep thinking about what's wrong, you'll think about it again. you got to replace that thought and then thank him that that thought is true. Amen. Now, our thoughts come from three sources. Now, listen to me very carefully. You have three sources. God's always putting influence in your thought life. You have influence in your thought life. And the devil has influence in your thought life. Now, let me help you. The devil can't read your thoughts. Some people don't know that. The only way he knows your thoughts is you say it or you have displayed it. If he's putting an evil thought in there, something about where are we going to get the money, where are we going to get the money, where are we going to get the money, and all that thought's coming in, it's usually the first person. You hear it like you're thinking it. It's not you because it's not of God. It doesn't go with what God would say. If you're doing it, you have a choice. I can either go with what God said or I can go with what the devil said. So you're the decision maker. While it's there, you have to quote the word, my God will meet all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And if he tries to come back, you do it again. And you stay on top of the thing. If the devil's trying to influence your thoughts and influence your thinking, you've got to hold on to the thought of God. Now, you have thoughts of God. They're always true. They're always lovely. They're always good. You have thoughts of the devil. It's never good. It's never right. It's never lovely. So if you have thoughts of torment, it's not of God. If it's tormenting you, if it's bringing fear, if it's tormenting you, if it's trying to figure out how am I going to make that bill, if it's tormenting you, it's not a God thought. You need to cast it down. you got to replace it that's how you cast it down. You replace it with the Word of God. If you're having a God thought, it's thoughts of peace. Mm -hmm. Jesus said he was the Prince of Peace. Amen. So if he's the Prince of Peace, your thoughts have to be peace, otherwise you're tormented. And thinking on those thoughts that... Now listen, you've got to pay attention to this. Don't let the thoughts stay in your head that are not of God. If they're not of God, get rid of them. Because that's not the plan of God. Now, let me ask you a question. If any of you know little children, do they want to watch anything they can on television? No. Do you monitor their they television? Have certain things oh, you watch. monitor, but you <laughs> monitor... Do they want to? Yes, they want to. Do you monitor them? Oh, yes, you monitor them. You tell them what they can and they cannot watch. Mm -hmm. I was just with my son and his three kids. Oh, he monitors that. That one is not right. Nope, you can't watch that one. Yes, you can watch that one. If it's got anything that's not of God, anything that's not lovely and true and good report, mm -hmm. they are turning it off. Because they don't want anything like that to influence them at all. Because the thoughts don't need to be in their head that are not of God. I don't care where they come from. Some people have gotten the notion it's okay to go to spook houses. Spook house is not of God. It's not of God to be in fear. Now, 
if little children need monitoring on television, what if your thoughts could be played on television? <laughs> Would you let them watch it? I'm, I'm serious. All the time? Or would you say, well, you can't watch that one. That that's my secret thought. That's my that's my that's my that's my personal stuff. You can't watch that. That's that's only for adults. Listen, if it's not for children, it's not for you. Amen. Amen. You got to think about your thoughts. Would I let a child watch this? If not, you need to cast it down. We have way too many thoughts going in our head that are not from God. And we play with them and we toss them. We pay, play tennis in our head. Are you know what I'm talking about? It's back and forth and a little volley back and forth. And yes, it will. No, it won't. Yes, it will. No, it won't. We don't think about it in such a way that it's good and lovely, good report and virtue and praise and keep our minds, thoughts and attitudes on these things. What are those things that... It's like, they're not thoughts, and they're not like a movie or anything. They're just like, almost like the things that you see on TV that are real quick flashes. And it's like, I don't even know what it is. It's not God. You know? They have what they call subliminal. And the subliminal teaching is to influence your subconscious in its thoughts. The devil is always sending you subconscious thoughts, subliminal thoughts, to try to get you to be influenced in the negative. Always. He'll say a word from somebody. They'll say something like, oh, da 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 wreck, and then go on. And you're thinking, wreck, wreck. And the only thing you got out of the whole conversation was the subliminal thought, wreck. So you ponder on it, you think on it, and you say, I'm not going to think about wreck, but on the way home, Guess what you have? A wreck. And you say, I don't know how that happened. I was just thinking that earlier today. It was like an intuition. No, it was a demonic thought. He scoped it out in you till it came. Most people deal with sickness in that way. Well, I'm getting sick. Well, I, And the TV is a big crime plus on that. They say stuff like it. It's the season where you're going to get sick. <laughs> if your hemorrhoids are this big, we can shrink them to this big. Listen, it, you're still going to have problems if they're this big. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, like, like, it's like major corporations. They, like McDonald's or something. Uh, they have these slogans oh, and they keep saying them. And oh, they do it. Oh, and then the kids oh, repeat them. It's oh, subliminal yeah. and they're, yes. they're subconscious. They don't even know where it's coming from. I often break into song when I'm driving because I'm subliminally thinking about the praise and worship all the time. My mind has been filled with that. In fact, it happened to me today. I'm driving along and words are coming out. I don't remember what they are, but all of a sudden, all the, the words come out. The song, the, wor the words to the song. And I said, Lord, that, that's a beautiful song. He said, keep your mind filled with this praise. If it's virtuous and praiseworthy, think on it. Amen. So, yes, all the time, major corporations are trying to get you to think of things. In the movie theater, you say, I'm here to watch a good movie. Over ten years, they found subliminal clips that were in the movies that were there to get you to go out and buy popcorn and soda. It was just a fast, fast clip, just like that, just a fast clip. And it was to get you, and so sales went up during that time because the subconscious was calling for something to eat. It can be influenced by what you watch, what you see. But like the, the uh, military is... All the time. Yeah, I mean, they've written a book on that. They know exactly how to do yes. it. Yes. They know exactly... And they get you to be what we call brainwashed. Yes, exactly. Brainwashed. Most Americans have become brainwashed because they watch the TV. That's why they call... I mean, they just sit there and watch it. It's a boob tube. And they just watch it. And they fill up their time. I know people that watch 24-hour news. And they leave it on day and night. Don't they? 
and they just watch it and watch. You've already seen that. You don't need to see it again. I know, but it might change. <laughs> it's been that way for the last nine hours. When is it expected to change? And they play it and they play. Listen, we have got to do something about this. In Romans, in Romans 14 and 23, in Romans 14 and 23, it says, whatever is not of faith is sin. If we're thinking, even thoughts, if we're holding the thoughts that are not faith thoughts, we're committing sin. I think we ought to ask God to forgive us and get back to faith. Because faith pleases God, not, not anything that's not of faith. We are filled with stinking thinking. What are you thinking? We're thinking about all kinds of stuff. What's going bad? What's going wrong? If we don't have faith in God, we'll have faith in the devil and we'll agree with him. I've heard people say, well, you know, my arthritis, well, when did you take possession of it? I mean, that's the devil's arthritis, and he's trying to get you to grab it. You've been made whole by the blood of the Lamb, and the devil's trying to make you sick. You've got to stop that. 1 Corinthians 13, you get down to verse 4, and it says, Love suffers long. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. Love does not behave itself rudely. Love does not seek its own. Love is not provoked. But then it gets to this verse. It says, love thinks no evil. Wow. That is Isn't that powerful? Yes. Will not let an evil thought come through your mind. Love thinks no evil. That's been in that particular verse from the time I've had a Bible. But some people have failed to recognize what it says. Love thinks no evil. It thinks no evil. Praise God. It thinks no evil. And the Lord is trying to get us to some place where we don't let that stuff out of our mouth. This entire chapter is dedicated to think about love. And here's the, the, the word of the Lord to us. He says, what are you thinking? You've got to stop thinking about something evil. Matthew 12, you get to verse 34, and it says, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Matthew 12 and verse 34. If it's rolling around in your heart, it's going to come out your mouth. I've had people say, well, pardon my French. That's not French, honey. <laughs> but I know it's in your heart or it wouldn't come out. It wouldn't come out. If it's squeezed out, that's usually what happens to toothpaste under pressure. It comes right out. That's exactly what's in your heart. What is in your heart will come out your mouth. That, that is what God wants us to put in there, the Word of God. So that that comes out of your mouth when Amen. you're under pressure. Amen. Amen. In Proverbs 23, and get to verse 7, it says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As a man thinks in his heart, you are what you think. If you let it drop into your heart, you are what you think. Our thinking is the culprit. It's the culprit. Now, let me help you. Write this down. Positive thoughts are from God. Mm -hmm. Negative thoughts are from the devil. God does not tell you negative thoughts. He doesn't say... Well, I think I'll kill you today. That That's not God. That's the devil. In 1 Corinthians 2, in verse 16, it says, Who has known the mind of the Lord, that we may instruct him? And then verse the last part of the same verse in, in 1 Corinthians 2, 16 says, We have the mind of Christ. Yes. Amen. Oh, glory. Can you imagine Christ thinking any thought but the thoughts the Father told him to think? He did not wake up in the middle in the, in the early morning and say, "Disciples, leave me alone. I have not had my coffee yet." That's that that was not that didn't come from Jesus. Okay? 
If we're supposed to be like this with the mind of Christ, we wouldn't allow the negative thoughts like we do if we believed it. We'd stop the negative thoughts. Do we have negative thoughts? Oh, yes, we have negative thoughts all the time. In fact, most researchers have said we think 75% of the time of negative stuff. We think of something negative. Why our wife or husband said that? It's negative. Why they did that? It's negative. How somebody treated us at a fast food place? It's negative. Why'd they take that stuff off the shelf? That's negative. Why'd that old company act that way? It's all negative. We, hey, we just think negative, 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 negative. Now, what did we learn? Where do positive thoughts come from? Where do negative thoughts come from? The devil's trying to hoodwink you into thinking negative thoughts so that you will act upon something negative and live a negative life. That's the devil. Amen. Now, let me ask you a question. What's the percentage of people that you think have problems? <laughs> Excuse me? What, about 35, 40% like that? You'd think it's 100% have problems, right? 100% have problems. We all have problems. We all have, problems. We all have If everyone has problems, how come we all don't act the same? Because it's how you think about the problem that determines whether or not the problem has you. Either you have problems or the problem has you. So if you think about the problem in Fentium and you think about it all the time, you're not thinking about something good. When you're not thinking about something good, something good does not happen. Philippians 4, it starts in verse 4. It says, this is the Lord. This is, this is Paul writing to the Philippian church. He's writing the gospel of God. He says this, Rejoice in the Lord. Always. Always. What if I got problems? Always. What, what if I'm dealing with something? Always. What, what if my neighbor treats me wrong? Always. What, what if the fast food place gives me the wrong sandwich? Always. Always rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Always. Then he said it for us slow folks that need to hear it twice. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice. Let your moderation be known to all men. What does that mean? You don't fluctuate. You don't go high, 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 and low, 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 high, 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 low, low, low. You're just moderate. It says do it with moderation. The Lord is at hand. Be careful or anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. He says when you pray, do it in thanksgiving. You do it once in prayer, but then you go on and say, I thank you, Lord, that my finances are taken care of. I thank you, Lord, that you've healed my body. I thank you, Lord. Because if you don't thank him for it, you're unthankful, and that's unholy. Right. That's not Amen. even godly. Amen. That's right. Amen. Then verse 7 says, And the peace of God. Where does the peace thoughts come from? They're always from God. Torments from the devil. Peace is from God. And the peace of God that passes understanding will quicken your heart and your mind, that's your thoughts, in Christ Jesus. He says, and what's in your heart is going to come out your mouth. That's going to be the peace of God, not the torment you're under. Amen. That's good preaching. I like it. The Bible says that particular scripture says the peace of God will guard. Ooh, guard your heart. Your heart. And, that, and Rick Renner did a teaching on that. And he says it's like a group of Roman soldiers that are positioned around something, guarding and keeping the evil from coming to it. Amen. Amen. Positioning around us. Peace. God's plan is for us to walk in peace. He wants us to stay in peace. That means no turmoil. You know when you have those thoughts and you need to think about it for a while? Let me just ponder on that. Usually you're pondering not on the good. You're pondering on what's wrong. You ponder on it. You ponder on it. You ponder on it. It's causing you turmoil because it's bringing worry. It's bringing frustration. It's bringing all kinds of anxiousness. And the Bible says don't be anxious. But when that anxiousness comes, he says, cast that off for the peace. Cast it off. 
And it brings you into the position of love because you start thinking about the things of God. When you have his character in nature, in the character of God, is the peace of God. So when you're in perfect love, guess what happens? All the fear goes because the Bible says perfect love casts out fear. Amen. Casts out fear. And the whole process of sanctification in the Lord has to do with what are you thinking? Right. That's right. Wow. You mean my healing? It has to do with what you're thinking. That's right. You mean my finances? It has to do with what you're thinking. What you, you mean think whether I get along with the people I or not? It has to do with what you're thinking. Go ahead. Because what you're thinking is eventually going to leak out. What and you're, you're thinking. Say it, and then when you say it, you're hearing it, so you're reinforcing, you're reinforcing. the negative. Mm. Instead, of mm. the God, instead of what God's word mm. said. And the other people will hear it too. That's right. And everybody you're else can hear negativity. it. Ooh, glory. You need to feed the word. Feed on the word. Tonight, we need to get a handle on what we're thinking. Yes. We need to get sanctified thoughts. Yes. How do we sanctify our thoughts? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> don't let anything in except the... Listen, do you eat stuff that you don't like? And if it comes... Listen, even little babies, I've seen videos in the on the Facebook. You put a little food up in the baby's mouth, he doesn't like it, and they spit it all out. We know what we like and what we don't like. But we eat all the negative stuff all the time about what you see and what you hear. If you don't want it in there, spit it out. Right. Don't listen. Don't listen to that stuff. Sanctify it. Here's what you need. Yeah. Number one, you need the mind of Christ all the time. Yeah. He's already given it to you. What you need to do is activate it in the forefront. Right, right now it's in the background. But if you don't activate it to the forefront, I, and listen... You do that by prayer, you do that by scripture study, you do that by rela relationship, and you do that by diminishing your negative thoughts. Mature Christians know good from evil. And they know what they're supposed to choose. They know how to choose because they're wise. Hebrews 5, you get to verse 14, it says solid food... You know what you like to eat. Solid food, the stuff from the Lord, solid food is for the mature who by consistent use, that's of eating the right thing, you train yourself whether it's good or bad. You train yourself to distinguish good from evil. That's Hebrews 5 and verse 14. And if you know what's good and what's evil, guess which one you should eat? The good. If you know the witch is giving you a bad apple, are you with me? You know the devil's giving you a bad apple, do not eat it. Yeah, but I like this scripture because it's one of the things it says, it says those who are full age, you say, full age. mature Christians, mature. it says those who by reason of use yes, have their senses exercised. So if you are using the word, if you are taking the word in, speaking the word, meditating on the word, when it comes time to use that word, you're using it against the enemy and against your the evil thoughts, then you are exercised exercise. to discern the good and the bad. Excellent. You have exercised yourself. Excellent. Exercise. You have you made yourself working it. You're doing Amen. it. You're doing it. You're doing it. You're doing it. Doing so that's it. the first one. You gotta like you gotta hold on to the mind of Christ. Exercise that that's word. That's an exercise that word. Number two, you gotta separate your thoughts. You gotta know which ones are from God, which ones are from the devil, and which ones are you. Yes. You gotta decide, is that a godly thought? Let it in. Is that a not a godly thought? Yes. Shoot it dead at the door. Yes. Don't let it in. It's not for you to come in. Once you categorize every thought, every every single thought, you categorize it. Yes. Even while you're thinking it, would Jesus think on these things? What are you thinking? If you let the thoughts linger, 
they will destroy you. The devil would love to kill, steal, and destroy. And exactly. it starts with your thoughts. Exactly. So you got to categorize them. If they're not of God, capture them yeah. and get rid of them. you got to capture the devil's thoughts, bind up the devil's thoughts, cast out the devil's thoughts, and replace them with the Word of God. When I first started doing this in Bible school, I first heard a teaching in this similar manner. I had always been a denominational boy, had never studied the Word in any increase in any time at all. If I would spend 10 minutes a week in it, it was reading it along with the pastor during the sermon. That was my total time in the Bible with the, with the Bible once a week on Sunday. But I first heard in Bible school that you got to capture these thoughts and you got to cast out these thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I heard that as John Osteen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to capture these thoughts. Mm -hmm. When I heard him say that, I was like, well, I don't know the good thoughts from the bad thoughts, but he said you can recognize that if it's negative, it's not from God. Right. If it's positive, it's from God. If it's, neg if it's terrorizing, it's not from God. If it brings peace, it's from God. Amen. So I looked at I began to start on that. That day that he preached that, I heard it in Bible school and I said, okay, I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, for the next few weeks, hundreds and hundreds <laughs> of times, I was casting down thoughts. Yeah. I said, why is this taking so long? And, and the Lord said, you didn't recognize your head has been filled with them. Wow. That's right. Right. As an average guy. Because people are trained by trained. their parents to think bad. Trained to hear yeah. wrong. We're trained to exercise the wrong thought. We know there's good and evil, but we're trained to take on the evil. Yeah. Yeah. So we do. Yeah. I was listening and I was trying to clean it out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. I was casting down those imaginations. About three weeks into it, I was casting it down. I went almost a half a day before another one hit me. I said, look at that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, what? What's up with that? Oh, my goodness. You mean to... T and a goofy little denominational boy like me, and I can hear these things and grab this thought and cast it down? You mean that's been in the Word all this time and I never used it? I said, that's the most powerful scripture I've ever heard. Wow. And I started quoting. By the end of the month, the last session with John Osteen, it was a whole month long teaching. At the end of the session with him, I said, thank you, Lord. That one thing has set me on a pace with you. I'm free from negative thoughts. Amen. Listen. I don't let them ponder in my mind anymore. If I have a thought, I cast it down. If it comes to me, I'm getting rid of it. I tell all my relatives. I tell all my friends. I tell my wife. I listen. I'm, I don't. I'm not hesitate. If it's a negative thought, I say that's a negative thought. Don't even get rid of it. Don't even. And I, I used to tell my little children, you get go look at yourself in the mirror. That's a negative thought, and you're letting it out your face. Uh -uh. <laughs> don't don't be showing that. That's wrong. That's a, hundreds of times. He said it this way. Well, praise God, <laughs> because I don't want the negative thoughts. I know that's not from God. I took Bible school lessons on that. Yeah. You got the same as a Bible school lesson here. Yeah. That one thing will set you up for victory in Christ. Yeah. Cast Amen. down imaginations. Right. Cast down imaginations. Now, according to the word in 2 Corinthians 7, you get to verse, oh, let's say verse 1. It says it like this. Having therefore these promises, he's talking about the Word of God. Right. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. What do you mean cleanse yourself? You wash yourself with the Word. Mm -hmm. Having these promises, beloved, wash yourself out with the Word from all filthiness. Mm -hmm. It's talking about anything negative is filthy. Right. It's filthy. It's not of God. His stuff is pure. His stuff is holy. The devil's stuff is filthy. You cover yourself. You wash yourself from filthiness by the word. It cleanses your flesh and your heart. That's your spirit man. 
It cleanses your flesh and your heart. And it perfects holiness mm -hmm. in the fear of God. Yeah. When you cleanse yourself with the Word. You cleanse yourself with the Word. That's pretty powerful That's pretty right good. there. Yes, That's yes. pretty powerful Amen. right there. Yes. Now, Amen. we come to number three. Mm -hmm. Number three. I've already said number one, you got to have the mind of Christ. Number two, you got to separate your thoughts. And be sure you get rid of the devil's thoughts. Number three is just like number two. Be sure you're casting out the devil thoughts. Casting them out. Every thought, every thought. Listen, some people will try to back up a dump truck to your house full of trash, and if you're so stupid to let them put the chute out inside your house, they'll fill it up with trash. Yes, they it's going to be garbage. It's going to be trash. You got to stop them before it starts. You got to say, "Wait a minute, hold that. I don't want that in my. I don't want that in my thought life. Uh -huh. I'm not going to have that in there." They'll say. Oh, you're not looking so good today. Yeah. Come on, anybody ever heard stuff like, yes. you look sort of tired. Nope, not me. I'm not tired at all. Nope, I'm full of life and vigor and I'm, I'm peppy. I'm, I'm excited. I'm filled with the vigor of the Lord. Yeah. I'm revived yes. unto the things of God. Yes. And the people will go, oh, oh, well, I'm, I'm just saying, uh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> we had that happen just last Friday. Somebody said to both of us, you're looking kind of tired. Nope, nope, not tired at all. By the time we was done quoting it, they said, well, well I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't mean anything. Yeah, if you didn't mean anything, don't say it. That's right. Amen. Second Corinthians 10.5 says, just like I said at the beginning, Second Corinthians 10.5, and somebody else quoted it, but it's very good. It says, cast down imaginations and every high amen, thing that amen. exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bring into captivity every thought, every thought, every thought, every thought. Every, listen, every thought to the obedience of Christ and His Word. Mm -hmm. You bring it down to the obedience of the Word. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think of yourself negatively long enough, it produces self-hatred. What am I talking about? Come on, help me. I'm stupid. Well, that, I was just stupid. I'm so stupid. Any other thoughts like that? Somebody, well, I'm so bad I don't think anybody will ever love me. I've heard that one. I've heard some stuff from people. They say even to the point where they're in such self-hatred, they'll say things like this. I wish I was dead. Hmm. We heard that one just last week. woman says, there's a hurricane coming. Just Pray for me to die. Get me out of my misery. That's self-hatred. That's where you've gone to seed with your thoughts in negativity. And you attack yourself. Anytime people attack themselves, I stop that stuff. Somebody says, well, I'm so bad. I said, don't say that. Well, I'm just really bad. Don't say that. I'm always wrong. Don't say that. People say, why do you do that? Because that's self-attacking. Let me explain. I was in the medical profession at one time in my life. I got a degree in that and decided I would go and be a, a medical director at a plasma research center. That was my first job. And when I was making serums and all that kind of stuff, that was my first job. And I had doctors working for me and nurses working for me as my first job. I didn't know much about it, but I did know this. There was something they taught us at that time a medical term for people that had sicknesses that we could not distinguish. They always had something wrong with them. They always had several things going wrong. And there is a psychosomatic term that's used for people that have sickness, and it's called a white corpuscle, a white corpuscle deviant behavior. Now you say, what? White corpuscle deviant behavior. I studied the blood. And they called this white corpuscle deviant behavior. Now you say, what is that? Now here's what, here's what scientists say. White corpuscle deviant behavior is. It's the resulting... Now this is white corpuscles that are fighting your... Instead of fighting infection, white corpuscles fight your infection. In, instead of fighting infection, they fight against the 
natural cells in your body. They quit fighting infection and they fight against you. That's how they explained away attacks of the devil. They did not say that was an attack of the devil because he's out to kill, steal, and destroy. They called it white corpuscle deviant behavior. And now you can look it up on the internet. It's on there. There's white corpuscle deviant behavior. What it results in is tumors, Crohn's disease, lupus, diabetes, and hundreds of other diseases that we can't describe how they got. And how did it come? It's, it's the man's attempt to explain the physical attacks of the devil. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Even at that time, I knew, before I went to Bible school, I knew it was an attack of the devil. It was not, it was not just man getting sick. Because their people would get sick when it wasn't in their family, it never run in their entire line of genes, but they'd get, end up with diabetes. Diabetes says it's supposed to be passed down because it's passed down because some people get it and go, uh, you know, all my family had diabetes, I'll probably get it too. Uh -huh. A lot of my family died from cancer, I'll probably get it too. Not me. And the devil is doing everything he can to make sure your words are manifest. Yes, Whoa. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? So that's number three. Number four. And that's all we got time for. Number four. You must renew your mind. Listen, you got to come Sunday. I'm going to teach on the renewing of the mind. Bring some people. I'm going to teach on the renewing of the mind. But as for as tonight, the renewing of the mind requires faith. Faith is when you act on the word. Because the faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. You got to act on that word. How do you act on the word? Come on, you got to say it. Gotta you got to say it. You got to say. In other words, you got to keep saying it so much. You got to activate that word. It's word activated. You got to activate that word. Doing the word only comes if you're saying the That's word. Right. That's right. You got to say the word and do the word, but it comes because you say it. You yeah. say it and you say it and you say it. Romans 12 in verse 2 it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It changes everything so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You gotta speak the word. You gotta speak the word. You gotta fill your heart with the word. Matthew 12 37 says, By your words are you justified. By your words are you condemned. Guess who you're condemning by your words? Self. You. You're condemning yourself. It starts from what you're thinking and it comes out your mouth. You're condemning yourself. Well, I'll probably have an accident on the way home. So be it. You've declared it. I'll probably fall down these stairs. Uh, guess what? You probably will. Mm -hmm. I'll agree with you. Now, according to the word, there are certain reasons things happen. You speak to a thing. The Bible says in Mark 11, 23, you speak to the thing and it's going to happen. Anybody, can you quote Mark 11, 23? What's it say? Somebody. Say to the mountain. Ah, say to the mountain. Be removed. Be removed. Be cast into the sea. Cast. And do not doubt. Don't doubt it. In your heart. In your heart. If you believe the thing you say. Believe it. You will have what you say. You have whatsoever you say. Right. You have whatsoever you it's say. Now, scientists not only have found a reason to believe why you're attacked of the devil, they have a reason that they think miracles happen. You ready for this one? Why do scientists think miracles happen? They explain away God's miracles with this word. They call it the theory of quantum physics. <laughs> Anybody ever heard of quantum physics? Yes. Oh yes. I got I, it's it is a it is to explain away the miracle of God. It's called quantum physics. Are you ready for the theory of quantum physics? Here's what it says. 
Here's what it says. When you speak to atoms so much, even the atoms will obey you. That's Mark 11:23, but it's God's word. Even the atoms will obey you. That's the word of God. But scientists say it's quantum physics. It's just because you're a man. No, it's because it was the word of God. If you speak to a thing, it'll be so. If you speak to a thing, here's how it says it. When you, this is the theory of quantum physics. When you speak to atoms so much, they will manifest in exactly what you're saying. Wow. That's the theory of quantum physics. Now, you say... Well, I didn't know that. That's ex It's hidden in their words, but that's their words. It's the theory of quantum physics. It's to explain away the miracle of God, and it's still what God said to do. Get it in your heart and say it out of your mouth. Right. Get it in your heart, say it out of your mouth. It's really true either way, good or bad. It's going to happen either way. It's going to bring on disaster, or it's going to bring on miracles by what you say. Isn't that interesting that man tries to explain it away and he tries to explain away demonic activity and explain away miracles. Mm -hmm. Yes? I was reading that since 1933 that have been tracing this elusive particle mm -hmm. the physicists had. Yes. Okay. And, and they finally particle. had to call it the God particle. Yeah, they called it the God particle. <laughs> <laughs> yep. What's left? Yep. Listen, I brought you these two things tonight to, just to add to what I'm saying because you're you because you're here you'll get special information that I hope will be challenging and and noteworthy, something to listen to. I don't always preach about stuff like this, but I want to share some things with you because there's so much that the word covers that nature or mankind try to pass under the table. That's all I've got.